Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord who God's life. Wow. It is Lord's Supper time, the sacrament of the altar, the last chief part of the catechism, and um, it only took us like three years to get here. Um, <laughs> You could have been confirmed faster, I guess, if you did this in more than five minute chunks at a time. Um, but really, the largely catechized life, as we've all sort of come to this moment, um, it's the same thing it always ever was. It's little five minute chunks where we hope to bring you God's word, uh, where we, we hope to bring you the joy that's found in Luther's catechisms, especially here, the large catechism. We're, we're looking at the peace of Christ, comfort for sinners. So when it comes then to the sacrament of the altar, well, it is that, comfort for sinners, the peace of Christ, the gospel for you. And that means that it comes with all the same things that we always do to the gospel. We will overcomplicate it. We will belittle it. I mean, not on purpose, but always kind of by pretending that we can do this stuff ourselves so we don't actually need help. And well, if we can do it, that means the gospel is not particularly impressive because most of you can't do calculus. And if you can't do calculus, you probably can't save your own soul. And if you think it's you who saves your own soul, but you can't do calculus, what does that say about Jesus who saves you? Relax, this whole thing doesn't stand on you. It stands on Christ. It stands on his word, just like the sacrament of the altar. It stands on his word. So the sacrament of the altar then is exactly what Jesus says it is. It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink for the forgiveness of sins, which is crazy and offensive. And quite frankly, if you've ever actually watched people commune, I mean, hard to swallow because it doesn't actually look like all that much, which is why everybody makes such a joke about it. When you see a man wearing funny robes, handing out little pieces of cereal and drinking cheap wine, I mean, it doesn't look like his body and blood. Um, and so we have this, this problem then where we, we, we struggle to make sense of this thing that God is simply promising is, and, and more is for you. So we do this Thing where we take a look at the clear words of God, which say this is his body, this is his blood, this is for you, for the forgiveness of sins. And we do the same thing that we really always do. We talk an awful, awful lot until we can finally find a way to make the scripture say something other than what they clearly do. We, we find a way to say is means represents or just a spiritual is or, or like a, a, if you really mean it in your heart. It, just stick to Jesus' own words. This is what Luther does in the large catechism. He introduces the sacrament of the altar by writing. We must also speak concerning the other sacrament, namely in these three points. What is it? What are its benefits? And who is to receive it? And all these are established by the words by which Christ has instituted it. In other words, you can call yourself a Christian. That's great. So hear the words of Christ. Hear what he says about this meal, which is for you. I know that it's hard to believe. I mean, it's so hard that you can't by your own reason or strength believe it. But, well, that's also true about his resurrection. Can't by my own reason or strength believe somebody who is dead rose. But the Holy Spirit has proclaimed it. And by faith, we cling to that promise. And when it comes to the supper, it's the same. The Lord's Supper is what Jesus says it is. It does what Jesus says it does. And it's for who he says it's for. You can spend all the time and energy you want trying to find a way to make him not say what he is very clearly saying, but then you'll miss the gift. Here, he gives his body and blood for you to eat and drink for the forgiveness of your sins. He who rose from the dead did not give you this gift to give you something to shy away from or try and explain away. He gave it to you so that you would find comfort in it, so that you would receive peace in the forgiveness of sins. He promises that it works. So instead of trying to prove wrong the risen Lord, hear him, receive from him for your good, his body and blood for you for the forgiveness of sins. Hang on, here goes the Lord's Supper.